Welcome to the English Language Institute of Singapore's podcast. I'm your host, Darren Nonis. This is the fourth episode in our Singapore Writing Institute series. The Singapore Writing Institute is known as SWE for short, and it is hosted by Alice. In our SWE podcast series, we invite teacher leaders from the SWE alumni to explore questions teachers have about the teaching, learning, and assessment of writing and representing. In this episode, we will discuss how teachers can lead and inspire others in the teaching of writing and representing. With me today is Principal Master Teacher, Dr. Tae Mei Yin. Hello, Darren, and all listening in. Let me outline why we are discussing the important role of teachers as leaders of writing and representing in this episode. The Singapore Writing Institute, SWE for short, is a signature professional learning program of Alice. And it has been modeled on the Invitational Summer Institute of the National Writing Project, which is a professional development program for teachers in the United States of America. Now, in establishing SWE in Singapore, we believe that well-informed and effective teachers can lead and inspire others in teaching writing and representing. In this episode, we will discuss how student outcomes are realized when teacher leaders build community and support others meaningfully in improving classroom practice. The SWE alumni is a community of teacher leaders who are passionate about their students' learning and support others in planning and carrying out effective teaching, learning, and assessment. Let us meet two of our SWE alumni, Sudesh and Leelin. They are teacher leaders who have influenced and inspired their peers. In today's episode, they will give their insights on why and how teachers can lead in the teaching, learning, and assessment of writing and representing. As with the first three SWE podcast episodes, which featured SWE alumni reading what they wrote, Sudesh and Dilin will do the same in this episode. Each will begin with a reading of one of their writing pieces. As you listen to them, identify what resonates with you as they talk about the critical role of teachers as leaders of writing and representing. Hi, I'm Sudesh Vasudesh, Head of Department of English Language in Ang Mo Kio Primary School. I've been teaching English language at the primary level for about 20 years. I participated in SWE in 2018. I'll begin with a reading from my piece, This I Believe. This piece captures my key beliefs about how important it is to lead and influence teachers of writing and representing. I have three key beliefs about leading and influencing teachers of writing. First. To lead and influence teachers of writing, we must role model the attitudes, behaviors, and pedagogical approaches of an effective teacher of writing. Without a willingness to show the way, one cannot expect teachers to know the way and go the way. Second, leading and influencing teachers of writing inevitably requires one to lead change. That includes achieving buy-in and providing support for teacher learning. Third, Leading and influencing teachers of writing requires one to recognize the fact that everyone is at a different point in their professional growth. There is a need to meet them where they are and collaboratively determine where they would like to go and how they get there. These beliefs inform my practice as a teacher leader and the decisions that I make when I plan, design and facilitate professional learning in the area of writing and representing. My own journey as a teacher inquirer has helped shape and sharpen my practice as a teacher of writing so that I am more effective in the classroom. Thus, when I share my practices and student artifacts as part of my efforts to lead and influence other teachers of writing, 
they can see that I'm not just sharing theories, but I'm leading from my own experiences in the classroom. Hi, I'm Lilin, a lead teacher of English Literature at St. Andrew's Junior College. I participated in SWE in 2014. SWE allowed me to inquire deeply into the teaching of writing and representing. It radically changed key aspects of the way I thought about and taught writing and representing. This is what I believe. I believe that writing is a highly complex, affective, cognitive, social and linguistic endeavour. To write well, students need to be cognitively and affectively engaged. They need to engage in collaborative inquiry and introspection in addition to acquiring the necessary language skills. To achieve this, I believe that there needs to be fundamental shifts in the way that teachers think about writing design learning experiences, and give feedback on writing. To lead positive and sustained change, I believe that the teacher leader needs to be an effective mentor, pedagogical leader, designer of professional learning, and collaborator to influence key decisions related to curriculum and assessment. Sudesh and Lilin both spoke about how, as pedagogical leaders in writing and representing, it is essential for them to be classroom inquirers and to sharpen their own pedagogical practices to influence change in the classroom. We asked Sudesh what he did to shape the practice of the teachers he worked with. Let's listen to what he says. One of the first things I realized was that most teachers in my school believed that writing and representing was mainly about responding to the exam-type picture stimulus. The pre-writing stage consisted of brainstorming ideas based on the stimulus given and Feedback consisted of teachers identifying language errors, giving a score, and following up with lines like, Good job! Your story was very interesting. Not surprisingly, their pedagogical approaches tended to be exam-focused, and as a result, students were generally not interested in writing, and most did not show significant growth as writers over time. My approach was to first strengthen the department's knowledge base on writing and representing. We embarked on a professional learning program with Alice on the teaching of writing and representing so that we could all learn together about the importance of ensuring process orientation in our teaching and students' learning. Next, I organized professional learning teams, PLTs, at each level in order that there be a safe space for all to become teacher inquirers. This was where deeper learning and practice could occur. Our efforts to collaboratively learn, plan, and discuss the design of lessons helped forge a culture of learning among the teachers. One shared understanding we established early on was that every teacher was at a different point along the continuum of learning. And as adult learners, we are responsible for our own learning to move to the next point on the continuum, with the support of the team. When we discussed the teaching of writing and representing, we centered our discussions around our students' work and the writing process. Evident in what Sudesh has said is that for teacher leaders to impact and shift their own and their peers' practices, they must first build up their own self-awareness about their beliefs and practices and be able to discern why they do what they do in their classrooms. It is exactly for this reason that teachers who participate in SWE have lived experiences by immersing themselves fully in the processes of writing and representing. They get to reflect on their current practices and to build their own knowledge bases about the teaching of writing and representing. Having strong knowledge bases enables them to sharpen their practice in order to impact student outcomes. They delve into theory and evidence from research to deepen their understanding about what writing and representing involves. The sum total of their learning experiences during SWE helps them to empathize with the highs and lows that anyone who writes, represents and creates encounters. Let's listen to what Lilin has to say about how she has strengthened her knowledge basis 
an understanding of writing and representing, as well as how she has impacted the learning of her students and her peers. Reflecting on my own experience as a writer allowed me to have a much deeper understanding of processes in writing and representing. I gained greater confidence in my ability to lead as a young senior teacher then, as I knew that what I was doing was backed by research and evidence from classroom practice. Identifying one or two focus areas that I wanted to address was useful in this process of leading change, so that change would be manageable. During professional learning sessions, I presented what I had learned from Sui, together with what I had applied in my own classrooms. I encouraged my team to bring their issues about student writing to the table, and we discussed concerns as well as possibilities. I mentored the younger teachers in my team by co-teaching with them and discussing the impact of teaching on student learning. We revised and tweaked lessons based on what worked and what could be improved. This helped us to be adaptive in our practice and to strengthen our expertise. I also encouraged my team to experience and regard themselves as writers and to apply that learning to their own teaching. For example, to write in their classrooms and to model thinking aloud as they made decisions about their writing. In doing so, their students could more clearly see how writing is a process and a complex cognitive endeavour that requires ongoing drafting and revising. So, just listening to Li Lin, we can see how her colleagues have turned to her for her leadership and guidance. She has supported them by drawing from her own classroom experience. She has been able to do it because she had already been inquiring into her own classroom practice. Teacher leaders who have deep knowledge about the teaching of writing and representing will grow strong conviction about their role and commitment in the teaching of writing and representing and about leading their peers in pedagogically sound practices. Hence, the importance of teacher leaders being lifelong learners who model continuous learning by inquiring into their own practices. They can also encourage their peers to inquire into their own practice of writing and representing to find out what works and what can be improved in classroom practice. When teachers learn from one another and work with one another to improve the teaching and learning of writing and representing, collectively, they build a collegial and collaborative culture. You mentioned that having a collegial and collaborative culture helps in supporting teacher learning. Let's listen to Sudesh and Lilin speak about how they have fostered a collaborative culture with the teachers they work with. Teachers need to understand why and how collaborative efforts result in more effective outcomes for them and their students. In my school, my teachers are used to collaborating in their subject and level teams. They understand that such efforts offer opportunities for them to learn from one another and create synergy that positively impacts student outcomes. Over the last three years, I've noticed a shift in the conversations during the professional learning sessions. For example, from questions like how many full-length writing pieces must my student complete this term, my colleagues now ask questions like what would be an appropriate text related to this theme that we could use as an opening read? I further collaborated with like-minded teacher leaders from other schools. Through collaborative inquiry, we discovered that we could teach our students to develop their own personal voices and even help them to articulate emotions which were difficult for them to express on their own. The most heartfelt responses we received from our students were their discoveries about their personal beliefs, selves and talents. For example, one student wrote that instead of the typical boring essay that he would have written, he discovered that he could be creative, given the appropriate tools, conditions and environment which were now part of their writing process. This shows how our collaborative efforts had resulted in not only our own professional growth, 
but also student gains. Leading involves influencing peers in order that student learning outcomes can be impacted through effective teaching, learning and assessment. Teacher leaders take on the roles of mentors and collaborators who create a safe space for their peers to take risks together. They lead the way in bringing peers together to learn from and to help one another. We had one final question for the alumni. We asked them what advice they have for teacher leaders hoping to lead the teaching of writing and representing from their classrooms. I think that it is important for us to position ourselves as learners and not experts in the process of collaborative inquiry. It is easier to get others on board if they know that we are genuinely interested in inquiring into what would help our students attain the intended outcomes. As teacher leaders, we must role model the inquiry process. This starts with collectively identifying key issues that we are currently facing in the teaching of writing and representing, collecting data from our classrooms, and leading in data driven conversations, including jointly looking at student work using the collaborative assessment protocol. We must continue to strengthen our colleagues' knowledge bases for the teaching of writing and representing by discussing theories and principles underpinning the teaching, learning, and assessment of writing and representing. This will enable all involved to adapt teaching and learning plans to suit their learners' profiles. It is also important to bear in mind that learning is messy. We need to be more transparent about our areas for growth we should exhibit honest vulnerability and humility when appropriate so that teachers do not feel that they need to know it all as this inhibits learning and growth. I think trust and mutual respect are key. To gain the trust and respect of those you lead, we as teacher leaders must walk the talk. We must be a teacher inquirer and a role model. Instead of telling our colleagues what they need to be doing, we can inspire them to inquire into their own practice beginning with their students' pieces of writing and representing. It is important that we speak not only about what's been attained, but also our challenges and how we overcame them. Once colleagues see that we go through the same struggles as they do, the hesitations and barriers come down for them. They will be more willing to speak about their own struggles because trust is established when we make ourselves vulnerable. From this point onwards, genuine, heartfelt conversations can take place and leading and influencing teachers about the teaching and learning of writing and representing becomes easier. So, my view is we should celebrate the successes, reflect on the failures, adjust expectations where necessary so that there can be support ensured for all. As teacher leaders, we must expect the process of learning to be non-linear and at times messy. Remaining steadfast in focusing on the student learning outcomes and being resilient and flexible in thinking will help us navigate as we lead our colleagues. Thank you, Lilin and Sudesh. Indeed, that is sound advice from our Sui alumni who have experienced leading others from the classroom. Mayin, do you have any concluding thoughts for our audience? In concluding, I would say that Teach leadership is key to impacting student learning outcomes in the teaching of writing and representing. Teachers as leaders must lead with firm belief and conviction, underpinned by strong fundamental knowledge bases. In addition, teachers as leaders must be adept at involving peers and building a collegial community of shared practice. Thank you, Mayin, for your insights. That brings us to the end of this episode. We would like to express our gratitude to the Sui alumni, Sudesh and Lilin, for making time to contribute to this podcast. For more information about our podcast, visit our website at go.gov.sg forward slash E-L-I-S podcast. Thank you for listening.